What's going on, guys? Jet fan here. Takagi on the screen. It's gonna be a uh, arena battle. Congo on the screen uh, with aiming system mod one. Reason why I like Congo is uh, it still has speed, even with it being a battleship at tier four. It has, in my opinion, the best speed out of your top three battleships, and it's the most maneuverable, especially when they have these uh, like uh, little reload options, etc. Um, these little perks that you can kind of sail into or your team can sail into and get um, battleship, cruiser, destroyer on every team. So pretty even even uh, team setup in that sense, uh, being you know one of each ship class type outside of the carriers, which weren't in this arena mode. Um, so real quick rundown on what we have. So with, T with Takagi, with the gyrating drill bits, uh, the speed on this Congo is uh, let me double check my sheet here we got 28.7 knots with a 15.6 rudder shift um, not bad 16.6 on the firing range with uh, 11,016 for uh, AP shell damage concealment 13.1 .1. so again and if I were to take that off and put on the, the let's say for Takagi Let's say I were to take that off and I were to put on uh, crisscross. I believe the speed goes up to almost 31 knots. It's then 30.9 knots in the water. So uh, I understand that I'm going for more of a speed build here, but that little extra still uh, I think is a benefit with the giant ring drill bits. And 28.7 knots in the water is pretty good. Um, so again, I think that Congo gets a bad rap. And on top of it, too, another thing that I haven't pointed out, you get the spotter plane. So that to me is big, especially when you have uh, big opportunities to, to seriously influence a game and you have a spotter plane available. That extra little bit on um, you know your dispersion slash accuracy is going to do nothing but help. Uh, the biggest weakness that Congo has is uh, it is a battle cruiser, right? So it does not have the best armor. So you have to be mindful of where you're sailing and, and, and the engagements you're putting yourself in. Here I'm in kind of a rough spot. I have three teams that can shoot at me, right? I mean, you look at the map. Red's pushing right in the middle. They're, they're, they're just going right for the cap. Orange is kind of pushing in from that uh, the edge toward red. And again, all of them have juicy targets on me. So I'm losing five, six K a pop here, which isn't very good. You know, we're not trying to be the punching bag for everybody here. Um... But we do have Wilder Rebuild set up. And that, you know, eventually, if it worries some enough where I start losing to the point to where Wilder Rebuild kicks in, at least it'll kick in. Right? Now, you see our friendly ship. We already lost our destroyer. So that's not a good start. Right? So my goal here is to get behind this island, um, kind of let some of these guys duke it out a little bit, and try to put myself in a little bit more of an advantageous position uh, than where I'm at right now. And also note the reload too. It's about 26 second reload, which is pretty good. Um, I was worried about this the uh, the Emil Berton there. Um, I didn't want him to start sailing out and getting like right in the rough and tumble middle of this. But he's actually going and sailing just to uh, get those two objectives, a little uh, perks, which actually really helps me out in this game. So I'm I'm actually glad that he ended up doing this. Um, so he's going to go pick that up, and then he's going to basically kind of hug that island and try to just minimize who can shoot at him and do all that good stuff, which is great. You know, it's smart play. Um, so the big thing here I want to point out is um, this rain, or ranked, arena, excuse me. I get the two mixed up all the time. Arena here, um, I really only played it to get to top 50%, and then I got close enough to where I was pretty close to top 25% so I just grinded a, you know did a little more grinding I only played this the last like four days at the most and I probably played maybe maybe 12 matches total so you can tell that like these game modes aren't loved but I did like the change of pace you know it was it was fun being in this for a little bit um, so next time it comes back if you guys haven't checked it out I would suggest checking it out, especially if it's at Tier 5 or Tier 6. Those are fun tiers. Tier 4 is on the cusp of it kind of, you know, not being the best. But um, as a battleship guy, 
if you know if you're at two four again, I would suggest giving this ship a look, uh, simply because of the fact that you still have the speed and you can run ships down relatively well. You can maneuver enough. You know, it's it's maneuverable enough where you're not going to run into the problem like say U.S. battleships are going to run into, um, where you're basically in New York and you're you know where you start is where you're going to be the whole game because you move at like 20 knots or you're in the Nevada and you know you have the same problem. Um, so that's why I like this ship. Koenig's also a, a solid option. Um, Julio Cesare, if you have it, I unfortunately did not spend the coin on uh, the Julio Cesare, which I love. I love uh, the look of the Italian ships. I'm, I'm, a, I'm hoping that the main Italian BB line comes out soon because I would like that. Um, and a matter of fact, I'll probably have a Roma game coming out soon because I just started getting back into the Roma playing that a little bit so that's an exciting ship it's a fun ship solid ship so but anyway let's get back to uh you know going off on these tangents here um biggest weakness that this congo has it doesn't have the best guns they it has 356s um but as you see there they're, they're more than effective against cruisers so like congo in general the guns they're they're 356s and the armor is really not the best um, a lot of green, right? So a lot of 19 to 24 uh, millimeter armor on this ship. Um, basically, on your main gun batteries or on your midsection there, you're going to be looking at like 30, what is it, 70 something armor, 30, 34 to 70, 34 to 75 millimeter armor there. Uh, and your gun batteries, you're going to have a little bit more than that. But in general, you're not the best armored ship but you kind of also with that trade you get a lot more speed um, and again if I wanted to go with a pure speed build and not with the gyrating drill bits to increase the turret traverse and all that um, and the AP damage then I could get almost 30 knots in the water with a standard uh, like uh, battle booster and that's just like the, the main one that you can basically put on for nothing Right, I mean, this main bit, the main battle booster, is uh, what is it called? Yeah, common the common battle booster, which gives you just three percent of movement speed. Um, so most people should be able to afford to put those on the ships, um, unless unless you're upgrading for the higher ones, then you know whatever. But I, I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know what it is, but I have those. I keep putting them on and I, I have like 4,500 of them so I'm not really worried about running out of those. I have I basically put that on every single one of my ships. Um, so yeah and there you see that I take a wicked salvo from the uh, Koenig. Um, so you basically see the way that this kind of has played out and it's going to be a duel between me and Koenig and I'm in kind of a bad shape here because he's full health right so I, I I'm down a gun right now for eight seconds because it's disabled and he's got full health and he's got a really good fast reload so i take another wicked salvo there i basically got caught in no man's land i wanted to turn out and i couldn't figure out really what i wanted to do because ideally what i would have liked to have done was go behind this island heal up some of his health and get more of an even strength engagement wasn't what was going to happen here so here i am behind the island i'm trying to buy as much time as i can um, and again this spotter plane you, can, you, you don't necessarily have to use it for situations where you're going to be engaging ships. If you really need to know where somebody is and you're behind this island and you're kind of tucked away, you can throw it up there. It's an advantage in ranked that this ship possesses. So, again, I really actually do like Congo. And I know it's not the, the most attractive ship and a lot of people bash it and say the guns are horrible and whatever. Takagi on it, right? I have a level 15 Takagi. It's more than functional, um, and with the speed, she's she's dangerous. She's maneuverable. She can get to where she you want her to be. Um, so here I here you go again. I get caught out again here. Just just not making smart plays. But you see the ricochet on the angle there, and some shell miss, misses. So if you angle steeply like this, uh, you can still bounce. You can bounce shells. You know it's not completely going to be overmatched every single time. Uh, but you're you're not the most powerful ship, right? So uh, you're not a tank. You're not the most well-armored ship. So you have to use your speed. You have to use your, your maneuverability, your 15-second rudder. And you have to kind of do that, the, uh, the proverbial kind of kick out, kick the guns out, right? Get the shot off, tuck it back in. Kick the guns out, tuck it back in. 
and try to do the best you can to, to reduce the uh, firing angles that enemies have on you. And here you go, right? So, okay, do we do it again? Now, that was just poor shell dispersion and a miss, but still, at the same time, we are um, reducing our, our silhouette, right? Reducing our profile so that it's more difficult for him to shoot at us. Uh, and we're fighting probably one of the most tanky ships at the tier. So this is a really tough matchup in general for us. Uh, and there you see actually pretty good salvo there, right? Um, and then I think we kicked the front guns in, but unfortunately I was I got caught here because I, I, and I also got lucky there. So another real good salvo, three standard pens, right? This gyrating jewel bits right there. The very, it's a, it's a good perk. And I know it knocks off like two and a half kilometer or two and a half knots of speed, but I would rather make that trade because 28.7 I think is still one of the best. So at this point I say to myself, all right, let's go for broke. I'm not going to sit here and run the whole game because he's already in the cap. So I'm, I reposition my guns off to my, uh, my starboard side, right? My right side. And I'm going to say, all right, so I'm going to anticipate him sailing out. We're going to take a shot. We're going to kick the back end out. We're going to engage him. By now, now that I haven't seen him, right, I'm, I'm anticipating that he's going to be off to my port side, my left side. So I'm going to start, as soon as I start coming around this island, I'm going to start turning to port hard. So here you go. I'm turning to port. I'm anticipating him to be off to my left here. And we're at, where are we at here? He's going to be right around here. I know he is, right? I mean, He's a battleship, right? I'm sitting here thinking, okay, where is he? Where is he? There he is. 3.8 kilometers away. He throws a pretty decent salvo there. It takes off about 5K. I return the salvo. We take 7K. So going back to it, I really should have just stayed here. I should have stayed here. This is should have. This is where I should have stayed and engaged him because he's flat broadside to me. I'm steeply angled. So this is going to be a blunder here by me. Because at this point, I'm in an advantageous position. I have him where I want him. Why am I sailing in? Why am I doing this? It's because I'm hyper aggressive right now and I'm thinking I'm going to kill this guy. And my, my plan here is I'm going to say, all right, his guns are trained on his port side. I'm going to get to his starboard side where his guns aren't going to be effective. And then I'm going to absolutely hammer. That's what I'm thinking here. I'm saying, all right, I'm going to sail faster than his guns can catch up. And I'm going to obliterate him, right? And I'm hoping, okay, well, so now I shoot upper superstructure. We get another good salvo. And now I'm going to start turning out to the to the left a little bit here, right? Because I don't, you don't want to keep going into that death roll. You just, that's the worst thing you can do. And so I'm trying to turn out a little bit, let the guns kind of catch up. And his rear guns are on me here. And he hits me pretty hard with those rear guns. So at this point, I'm like, all right, well... This is my chance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a go for broke style shot here. I'm going to need to absolutely hammer him in the side. We hit him pretty good. I, I'm basically caught in between a rock and a hard place because I know I'm not going to have enough to take him out uh, with those front guns, but I need those front guns on target. We take another uh, little bit from the secondaries there, and he sends a full salvo and ends up sinking us. But we get 117,000 damage in rank. They're in the arena mode. Um, I thought it was a decent showing of what Congo is good at. Uh, so if you liked the uh, video, give it a like. We'll see you next time out on the high seas, guys. Take care.